Here we go. So, uh, the plan today was to, and again, if you're following through the sector, looking at my laptop, uh, we're supposed to be doing contact process and harbour process for energy, oh, plus on-site energy, energy production. The last one, I'm going to get you guys to read through yourself. So on page, uh, where is it? Yeah, on page 206, what you'll find is there's one little section there on energy production. It's not you, you talked about turbines. And because we're talking about industrial processes, um, it just highlights the fact that you can use uh, transfer heat, all right, generated in any industrial process, uh, process uh, through a turbine. And if you know what a turbine is, it accelerates um, exponentially and you can actually connect the turbine to a generator and so therefore in theory for some of these processes that we're talking about, the industrial plants, they can generate their own electricity okay, and sort of be carbon neutral in relation to, to that. So that's why the energy thing sitting at the end of the chapter, alright, just to sort of highlight that. Alright, now, contact process, harbour process. We spoke about this yesterday, yesterday but I said we'd come back to it again today. All right. In the book, they only give you the second equation. All right. But sitting behind the contact process for sulfuric acid, there's really three steps. And the step that is the most important one is this one here. That's the one that determines on how the reaction goes. All right. Anyone got any ideas why? Why? What's, why is that one different compared to the other two? Caleb. It's reversible. A traversal. That's the equilibrium. Okay, one. The first one is going towards, uh, we're going to completion. Okay, but the second one is the critical. It's called the rate determining step. All right, and you'll sometimes see applications like this and other questions that we'll do. All right, in the book, um, in the next few lessons. All right, and also over your holidays. All right, so the rate determining step. So what we're going to do is look at what would our knowledge show. Now we've got, hopefully, we've got some knowledge about equilibrium. Let's shut this principle. How do I push it to the right? How do I push it to the left? Uh, how does that impact on the yield? Okay, because that's related to what we said yesterday. That's related to how much money we make. So we don't want it to be too slow, the reaction, and we don't want to get a really small yield of product either. It must be just a balance between those two things. So if we apply that, we're only applying it really to this step here. All right, go look at temperature and pressure to the rate determining step. First thing is temperature. So if we're going to look at temperature, we know that going to the right, it's an exothermic reaction. Going to the left, it is an endothermic reaction. Without going into all the reasons why, what temperature prefers SO3? Products. Okay. Low temperature. Low temperature. All right. So what we say is that a low temperature, okay, favours exothermic. Because, again, according to Lachapelis, if I lower the temperature, the equilibrium will try and increase the temperature to keep the case as a constant, Lachapelis principle. And so I lower it, it goes to the right. But we know that in terms of temperature, that means the rate is going to slow down. We don't want that. We want to maintain rate. And here, they overcome it by doing this. They are the catalyst. Okay? So, they're a bit sneaky. Um, so, the vanadium 5 oxide catalyst lowers the energy reactivation in the second step. That means the rate is compensated for by temperature. 400 to 450 believe it or not, is not really a high temperature. Okay? 800 degrees, I think, is what the book says in relation to temperature. Is a, is a high temperature in terms of reaction conditions. Okay, so this is, would be a moderate temperature, four four fifty. All right, so temperature, and we're only looking at the SO three. But did mention it. The reason we're looking at that is because it continues on to here. So the more sulfur trioxide we get, the more sulfuric acid we get. So we're actually connecting the second and the third reaction together. So we want to maximise SO3 because you know, based on the fact that this would be the excess heaps of water, just water, okay, all I would be doing is bubbling SO3 into water. So the higher the concentration of SO3, the more that I can pump into the water, 
the greater the rate, more sulfuric acid produced at the end of the day. Okay? So that's what we're trying to look at here. In terms of pressure, if I look at the second reaction, we've got two, three. So we've got three moles on the left, and we've only got two moles of gas on the right. So what pressure would favour the right button? Low or high? Low. Okay, so if we have low pressure, it's going to try and increase the pressure. Yeah? So low pressure, it will try and increase. So which way is it going to go if we've got low pressure? To the left. To the left. So we want, we want high pressure. Okay? So according to Lurt Chatelier's principle, the high pressure will favour the reaction to the right because it's got less moles of gas, less pressure. Alright? So if you think number of particles, this is like a low pressure condition because it's got less particles. So if I bump the pressure up, it's going to try and reduce it by going to the low pressure side based on particles. So it's going to go to the right. So we will be doing higher pressure. Okay? To favour the product in this instant. Make that more, make that more, increase sulfuric acid concentration at the end of the day. But they don't do that. Alright? What they've worked out in this system is that the pressure is only one to two atmospheres. That is actually low pressure. It's low. Very low pressure. Okay? Not high. We said we should be doing high pressure. Okay? We said low temperature. They do a moderate temperature, but they compensate with a catalyst. We said high pressure. In reality, that's only low pressure. What do you think they've used low pressure in this particular industrial process? What do you reckon they've gone for a low pressure? Jack, what do you reckon? So that there's more um, reactors, so then the concentration will increase? Uh, not quite. You probably haven't really thought about this one. Okay. Have you ever been around sulfuric acid lately? Have you ever touched 18 mole sulfuric acid? Do you know how corrosive it is? Very. It's very. Okay. So if you imagine an industrial plant that I had to go and design, and it's going to have sulfuric acid, which is dangerous enough, but now I want to bump the pressure up on top of that. It's an accident waiting to happen. Okay? The ammonia we know is high pressure, okay, but the ammonia is different entirely in terms of, is of, it, of its corrosive nature. So it gets down to this at the end of the day. It gets down to the cost and it gets down to the, the safety. So would I want to have be around an industrial plant with sulfuric acid operating at 200 atmospheres pressure? Probably not, okay? Because if there's a hose running next to me and there's a slight leak in that, it's going to, it's going to be pretty ugly, all right? But at the end of the day, really, if you look at the book, it's really to do with the cost. So as soon as we've got high pressure in industrial processes, the cost of production goes through the roof. So they obviously can't justify high pressure for sulfuric acid, okay? There's not enough money in it. So I would suggest, not without looking it up, I don't know what it costs for a kilo of sulfuric acid of a certain concentration, but I'm guessing that ammonia is probably a more expensive product to buy at the end of the day. But that's just a guess. I don't know without looking it up. Okay? Everyone happy with the process? Thanks. Okay. We did this yesterday. Harbour process. So, if we look at our harbour process, and if I asked you, based on your current uh, knowledge, uh, in terms of temperature, well, going to the right again, it is exo, going to the left, it's endo. And remember, we don't just say from now on, every reaction to the right is exo. It is exo to the right because it's got a negative delta H. Okay, if it was positive to the right, it would be endo. So don't get sucked in with that one. That means exo, it's the same sort of scenario as what we've got for contact process. So therefore, I should be doing this at a low temperature. But we know, in reality, again, not such a low temperature, it's a moderate temperature, so they sort of bump the temperature up a little bit for the ammonia production in reality. So this is the actual 
temperature that they use, they use 450. Okay? And so again, if you look in your book, uh, on the graphs, it's not the best yield, if you look at the graph, okay? So in your books on page, what is it, uh, 205, 450 is like uh, middle of the row, it's about a 40, just over 40% yield. They could do it at 350, a lower temperature, and get a higher yield. And again, why haven't they done it at 350? You get a higher yield at 350, why wouldn't they do that? Harrison? Take less time. Less time. More time. Yeah. yeah, we'll take more time, yeah. It would be slower, is what you meant to say. So the reaction would be slower, so it would take maybe twice as long to get that yield, whereas they'd be better off getting a 40% yield at half the time. So this is what I mean about these industrial processes. It's really a balance. And this is not something that you just, oh, let's have a go at those conditions. They would have done this through many different reactions and work out what's the optimal set of conditions. Okay? All right, so we said uh, temperature, low temperature. Well, we've got a moderate temperature, so we sort of overcome that. And pressure. So over here we've got four moles on the left-hand side. It's all gases. Three plus one is four. And we've got two moles on the right. So what, what pressure is it going to favour, Vaishna? Low or high? Which one? Low. Excellent. So going to the, so going to the right... We want to favour low pressure. So what we're saying is, okay, low pressure or high pressure? Low pressure will go to the side with the least. Good, excellent. So we should be doing this at one atmosphere, okay? Because one atmosphere says, oh, well, low pressure, let's, okay, let's basically go away Let's reduce the number of moles, okay, to, are we sure? No, it's the same thing. Yeah, okay. Don't believe everything the teacher says, okay. Is it low pressure again? Oh, come on, come on. Okay, so if we just start again. So where are the least number of moles? Right hand side. That means high pressure, high pressure will favour the least number of moles because it's going to compensate for that. So, it's the same as the, harbor of the, as the contact process. Everyone's looking at me and just saying, yeah, yeah. All right, high pressure is what we're after. And what they do with the harbour, they go to extremely high pressure. They just go all out high pressure. And as I said, there's cost involved with that, but they would have done their analysis and worked out, well, that's the optimal pressure to get the best yield in the quickest time, with the fastest rate, as far as they're concerned. And so they compensate the temperature uh, by increasing the pressure to something that's ridiculously high. Okay? All right, so that's really uh, contact harbour process. All right? And, and as you can see, when I'm explaining it, that, and, and, and you look at me and I said low pressure, but no, it goes to high. Alright, so you really have to nail that. So, if that's what I do in my head, I'm talking out loud, that's what I'm thinking in my head. Alright, and so that's what you need to get used to when you're going through all these questions. Because all the questions, same, same process. Change of temperature, change of concentration, did I say temperature? Change of pressure, okay. Adding a catalyst, and don't forget with the catalyst, you can have catalysts that can also slow reaction down. They're called negative catalysts. Or you've got positive catalysts that will speed them up. So you've got a bit of a, you know, a, a resource now, a toolbox, and you apply that to any question I'm going to throw at you. And then for the next lesson, though, we're just going to have a practice at those questions. All right, now, everyone can now sort of uh, chill, and that's what we're going to do for the second lesson.